the new Super 35 sensor that Canon have introduced with the C300 Mark III is quite a big step up from other S35 sensors that they have created before. From the body and the flexibility that gives us in terms of the expansion packs and the interchangeable mount to the sensor with its increased dynamic range for tackling scenes that possibly we couldn't have tackled or captured faithfully before, I can get more out of this camera. My money goes further. It's as simple as that from a business standpoint. From a creative point of view, it's unquestionably unlocking more creative avenues for us as filmmakers.
XS Wireless Digital is the perfect wireless audio solution for content creators and filmmakers. Thanks to a 2.4 GHz transmission, XS Wireless Digital is a truly plug-and-play system that allows you to upgrade your in-camera audio with one-button operation. With a variety of configurations to choose from, this entry point into the world of wireless will improve your workflow and will expand the possibilities of how you capture audio for your video. For more information, visit Sennheiser.com slash XSWD. The MKE 600 is a shotgun microphone ideal for professional video camera applications. Yeah. Maximal rejection of ambient side noises thanks to pronounced directivity. And because the MKE 600 has a very good suppression of structure borne noise, it makes one of the most versatile all round shotgun microphones on the market. Okay, welcome everyone to Pro V Live. Thank you all for joining me on this glorious, glorious sunny day. Um, so today we are joined by Paul from LiveView. Say hello, Paul. Just noticed you're a little bit wonky in the frame, so I'll fix that while you introduce yourself. But how are you, Paul? Oh, he's frozen. That's a great start to the stream. Paul, are you with us? <laughs> Don't leave me alone, Paul. Okay, I'll get that fixed. Let's get that fixed. So Paul had his laptop updating literally just before the um, stream. So I had to jump over to his phone. And uh, yeah, it looks like it did not work. Okay. Um, I will f tell you what, we will go back to pre-roll videos and um, I will reconnect with Paul and then we will start this again. We shouldn't be longer than a couple of minutes. I think his phone is probably frozen. We will be back in two minutes. The new Super 35 sensor that Canon have introduced with the C300 Mark III is quite a big step up from other S35 sensors that they have created before. From the body and the flexibility that gives us in terms of the expansion packs and the interchangeable mount, to the sensor with its increased dynamic range for tackling scenes that possibly we couldn't have tackled or captured faithfully before, I can get more out of this camera. My money goes further. It's as simple as that from a business standpoint. From a creative point of view, it's unquestionably unlocking more creative avenues for us as filmmakers.
Okay, thank you very much for being patient, everyone. Welcome back to Pro V Live. I believe this time I'm joined by a guest rather than a freeze frame of my guest. Thank you all for <laughs> keeping thing. And thanks, Matt Diver, for the Starkey thing in the chat saying, having connection problems. I hear Live View is a good solution. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for that, Matt. That did make me laugh. So I am joined by Paul from Live View. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for joining us on such a glorious day. Hi Carl, thanks very much for having me on. And no problem at all. Um, so, we, yeah, it's a bit ironic really that we started with some connection problems, isn't it? Because that's what <laughs> Live View is all about, really, isn't it? Absolutely. So, how long have you worked for Live View? What's your role there? Um, so, I, I work for Live View as a regional manager looking after Northern Europe. Uh, I've been with the company for about seven years now. Okay. Um, so yeah, starting off quite in the early days when we were doing the first sort of broadcast news gathering solutions through to today. Um, yeah, yeah, great. And so for the, those people that haven't heard of LiveView, let's start by giving them a quick little overview of who, who the company are, what sort of products do you make, you know, what solution really? are you fixing? Yeah, so um, LiveView is a company that was founded in 2006 and uh, the company was uh, started with the idea of making... Um, reliable video transmission from the field, um, more accessible, more reliable and more professional using uh, inherently unreliable networks. So broadband type connectivity, um, Wi-Fi, mobile broadband type networks. Um, and we started off selling that technology into the broadcast industry. Um, news gathering was the kind of first market segment to really take that off. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something we've grown over the last sort of 10 years. To, and it's become a kind of a a mainstream part of most sort of broadcast technology workflows today all across the world for news gathering and for sports contribution yeah for um, news gathering it must be huge i mean just i'm i'm live here from you know outside 10 downing street i'm live here from this protest that's happening i'm live here from the middle of the world the other side of the world you know it's a it's a massive yeah. thing yeah, it's a very widely used kind of worldwide, this technology, and it's something that LiveView kind of pioneered, you know, but with the cellular bonding idea. Um, and I think I saw a slide the other day that was, it was a snap of around about 20,000 units deployed worldwide wow. in terms of the global deployed base. So, yeah, it's very widely widely used and widely adopted in that space. Um, and I think when, you know, the sort of live streaming revolution happened, we increasingly got people coming to us but we asking for solutions to be able to use the technology that LiveView had developed uh, more in the kind of, you know, straightforward streaming uh, applications. So, uh, mm. you know, that's why we kind of worked on developing the LiveView solo product platform, which is what we're here to talk about today, which was kind of aimed at being a sort of lighter weight, lower cost, simpler to use uh, platform that would allow some of the uh, some of the tools and uh, technology we developed for the broadcasting industry into the kind of more streaming side of things. Yeah, sure. So we'll, we'll get started with the PowerPoint then. Um... We um, please do for everyone watching, leave some comments um, and we can see them throughout yeah. um, along the side there. So we've already had a, a question from Sky London who's saying interested in what the cheapest option is from them was on their website the other day, but couldn't quite work it out. Um, so we were basically going to cover that in this PowerPoint presentation yeah. anyway. So that would be that, which of course, but if you have any other questions at all, please do just leave them there and I'll either bring them up as we go, if it's appropriate for what we're talking about at the time, or I'll save them to to the end. So if I don't answer you straight away, please don't worry, I'll bring it back up at the end. So let's get started. The Live View Solo, and I have one here. There we go, little box. Nifty yeah. little thing. So what what is the Live View Solo? Um, so Live View Solo is a portable hardware encoder, which is designed for live streaming from the field. Um, basically comes with internal battery, several connection modems and several camera interfaces. Um, and it's designed for solving first mile connectivity. So we have our own protocol, which there's some slides coming up on, uh, which is designed to make sure that the reliability, resiliency and quality of your live streams um, are as good as they can be given the connectivity at any given venue that you're going to. So it's sure. really about um, providing the best performance on that first mile um, acquisition stage of, of your live stream um, and obviously that's really important for making sure you have continuity in the stream um, or, you know viewer engagement and uh, you know the overall viewing experience for for people that are doing this kind of live streaming yeah absolutely I think there's a video here that gives a, a, a 
Oh yeah, should we should we play that? Fine, let me. Yeah, it's it's uh, a marking shot, but it shows some sort of pictures in the field, which I think display it pretty well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's the little little solo box there. That's done everything for me now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we talked a little about Live View in terms of the, the company heritage, you know, where we come from in terms of past uh, technology. And this, the same technology goes into the solo is what we're using, um, you know, for those broadcast customers worldwide. So that's a little bit about how Live View are. Um, headquarters are in the US and Hackensack in New Jersey. Uh, but we've got offices uh, around the world and a, a very wide distributor and reseller network. Well, yeah, I think customers in 130 plus countries across five continents. So, yeah, I mean, that's not very many countries that people aren't using Live View in. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it, it, it's absolutely huge, this sort of thing. But I, I mean, I'm sure people would, would um, there's people out there that haven't really heard of Live View and um, don't, this isn't really their normal world that they exist in. And I, I would class yeah. myself as one of those people before all of, um, we're starting these streams. So I yeah. think there's there's a lot of people out there who Live View could make their life a lot easier and their work a lot easier. So let's go uh, through some of the customers there. Yeah, so this is uh, solo specific, but we put up there, so, you know, a few typical users, and these are kind of bigger brand ones of people that are using solo for live streaming and also at the bottom of the slide uh, some of the sort of technology partners that we work with in terms of integration so we can go through some of those in a bit more detail as we go through the platform do a little walk through a little bit later um yeah. so yeah this is the slide about the product so as i said it's a hardware encoder designed for portable applications um i think we've covered most of the basics of it and there are some slides later about the the different iterations and different models but it's for anyone that wants to live stream from from the field or from locations where you're not sure about the connectivity and want to you know increase the reliability um, on those locations. Absolutely. Um, well, the secret for doing that is on the next slide, I think, Carl. Uh, oh, there's an overview of the, the solo encoder. Uh, again, it's covering a bit of what we talked about, but it's basically a harbor encoder with screen. Uh, a battery that gives you around about two hours of, uh, of live streaming internally um, and several different network uh, connections for connecting to the internet. So the units have ethernet connections, they have Wi-Fi mm -hmm. connections, and they also have the ability to connect cellular modems. There are a couple of different iterations with different numbers of modems, which I'll cover a bit later. Uh, and the idea is that the product is able to connect to the internet on these different network connections and, and use them efficiently for your live stream. Um, and I think the next slide is the one I was thinking of, which uh, gives a diagram about that. So the idea here is that if you're using a single network connection, you're at risk of a number of things that can affect your stream, uh, whether the network gets disconnected or uh, the network speed is not very really high or it fluctuates because you're being contended. Um, adding different network connections together um, allows you to have more resiliency and have a more reliable stream. So the more connections you can put onto a video encoder that it can use, uh, you know, the more chance it has to have reliable streaming if it's able to adaptively use those together. So we're taking connectivity from Wi-Fi, mobile broadband, cellular LTE networks, uh, and from any ethernet connections and basically aggregating them together to make your stream more reliable um, and then delivering that onto your online video platform so it's about getting the best and most stable and the highest quality picture we can from the field location to the live view cloud where we have a you know high capacity networks that are then delivering to your online video platforms um, whichever cool. ones you want so i think we've got a little video here that explains how this live view reliable transport 
sort of technology. This yeah, so this is works. A, a video which is on our YouTube platform, but we put it up here just because it helps to talk through, I think, a l little bit about some of the ideas about how the LR2 protocol, which is our resilient streaming protocol, works. Um, so the idea is if you have uh, many different network connections in your unit, be those cellular, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, um, basically they're able to aggregate those together to give you a, a, a larger total aggregate throughput that you can use to give higher bandwidth streaming. Um, mm. What that means this, is... This is you're... really interesting, this bit. I hadn't actually seen it visualized like this. And I think this just yeah. really show, like, um, simply combined shows. I mean, I was sort of thinking of something that's, when I first heard about this, about something that switched between different ones, depending on which one was the strongest. But it's actually way yeah. more than that, isn't it? It combines them to say, send this little packet of information on this one, this one on this one, this one on this one, so that more data can be transferred and then stitched back together quicker. Exactly. And we had a, we had a good example when you and I were talking, Carl, to prepare for this call. My daughter switched off the, the broadband router in my home and I dropped off the uh, the Zoom call we were having. Uh <laughs> Now, I know that the router to BT Infinity would take a few minutes to start up, so I started up a, a MiFi with a 4G SIM inside, and I used that to join back into the call. So I, in the way there, I was doing a kind of network diversity. I was switching between my BT Infinity and the cellular modem, but of course it took me a few minutes. If I was using a bonding encoder that's basically being able to load balance those two connections together, you know, the dropout would have really affected the stream at all, because the buffer would have just accounted for that, increased the load balancing onto the cellular modem, and at worst, you would have seen a slight softening on the picture. So yeah. it's really about making that ability to add different connections and resiliency between them as, as smooth and as, as resilient as possible. I think the next slide is showing a bit more detail about the kind of idea about the jitter buffer. So within the unit, you have a total aggregate bit rate, which is made up of the network connections that you're using. And we're basically doing a round trip. Packets go to the cloud. Clouds come back to the uh, pa packets come back from the cloud to the unit to kind of measure that throughput um, and the unit's using that adaptively to decide at what sort of encoding bitrate it's encoding at. So you'll see at the bottom that the audio is always constant bitrate so we want to make sure the audio stays as the last thing to be protected in a stream mm. um, and then the video is basically on top of that best efforts to do as much uh, as much video bitrate as we can given the amount of aggregate capacity um, and there mm. is a, what you see a buffer there which is made up of some of the elements which in, are included in the LRT protocol things like adaptive FEC um, packet resend uh, and when the encoder is sensing that there is a drop in total available bandwidth the algorithm is decreasing the encoding bit rate on the fly uh, and then increasing it as the capacity increases again in order to make the make the stream say as, as smooth and as uninterrupted as possible given fluctuating and variable network conditions so the the internet side of the the live view will talk to the encoding side and and yes. vary your quality effectively depending on how yeah, exactly. strong your signal is um exactly. which is a really important part we, we've had a little question from matt as well um while we're on the, some of the more techie side of things is the live view um stream um friendly to firewalls i've had issues with hired halls and borrowed wi-fi with rtmp um yeah it's, it's not too unfriendly i don't think there's any real particularly strict firewall restrictions um i think we've got an faq document which gives the kind of ports required um i think unless you're trying to host on the professional side of receiving server within a firewall then there are some ports and restrictions and things like that but i don't think it's particularly um strenuous in terms of the requirements yeah and of course there's a bunch of different um methods for for connecting um other than just RTMP as well now. There's some, there's some good alternatives to that. So, right, so we've got a couple of little animations in this, which I hadn't realised. Right, so this is where you oh, yes. those fluctuations. Yeah, this is just what I, what I explained, that when you see, a, you know, an increase in the complexity of the video content, the units increase the video bandwidth. When you see a decrease in the uh, available bandwidth and the units adaptively decreasing that and then increasing it again as soon as possible. So. If you get sure. into interruptions because you know you went through a time or there was some event that happened it will recover as quickly as possible and make sure your stream stays as, as good as it can be given the connectivity you have so i guess option one of what you can do with this is just to use it as the endpoint to stream directly up to your content delivery network right yeah and that's mainly the the main purpose of the, of the product is that we're going to take a video source in and we are going to stream it to your streaming destination 
uh, whether that's an online video platform, a social media platform, or any other content delivery network that you want to stream to. Um, there's a list of examples of ones that we've integrated there, and we're constantly adding on those. Um, Rabio is on there, which is a new one we just uh, in, announced a partnership with uh, this week. Um, so oh, cool. we're constantly adding to those based on um, you know requirements, and some of them are uh, also companies that offer additional services like Restream.io, um, switching platforms, yep. Rabio, which is um, what I'm using right now. Yeah. For everyone right. to watch this right now so yep okay. absolutely um, and that's you know with the most ones that are most popular the ones that are most common we use the apis of those platforms in order to make streaming as simple as possible even down to sort of one touch streaming with uh, youtube and facebook where we're basically pulling in their api information to make the migration as easy as possible absolutely so this i guess is um, some of the other side of things which you can do with the products and dive into them a little bit more detail um, closely. Yeah, and we have a little walkthrough video on this, but basically in order to configure the unit, obviously if you've got a field-based encoder, you're taking out with a camera to something on the move. You don't want to be doing too much in terms of setup uh, on, on the stream side. So we have a, a portal for setting up the solo parameters, which is uh, pretty intuitive. It uh, runs on a web browser, uh, either on a PC, or you can run it natively on a, on a phone. It has an optimized... Uh, mobile optimized version as well. Um, and basically you can log into there, create a login and do that today. It's liveview.solo.tv. Um, and if you bought a LiveView Solo unit, you register with a serial number there, it pops up and then you have the ability to control and manage that within the Solo portal. So uh, I think if, there's a, if you move to the next slide, Carl, there's a little... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll, play the, I'll play it full screen for people who like this video. But um, yeah, this... Um... Yeah, so this is the solo portal and you can look at a unit in there and have a look at the interfaces so you can configure Wi-Fi or Ethernet parameters here. Um, if you've got cellular modems, you can, you know, check the enable and disable those, change things like the APN settings. Um, the most important thing or the most fundamental part of this is the ability to set the streaming destinations. So when you get down to the bottom here, you set a streaming destination and you start with a list here at the top of the ones which we have the API integrations with, like Facebook and YouTube. So those are the kind of one touch simplest ones, but down the bottom here, we've got a list of basically preset RTMP destinations and then eventually generic RTMP. So this is a whole load of platforms that we support there. Um, if you look at the Facebook destination setting, you end up with a bunch of fields here, which are basically pulled straight from the Facebook API. And if you're logged into the browser with your Facebook profile, then it knows which pages you have access to. And basically you're just creating the post details that you would create in Facebook uh, here as your streaming destination. Um, you can do things like scheduling the stream. Um, if you want to do a stream that's going to happen later uh, and some advanced settings to enable you to overwrite the bitrate and resolution that you're streaming to on the online video platform side. Um, and basically when you've finished setting up the post here, you save that as a streaming destination and that kind of gets um, pushed to the unit as a preset. Um, and then you're ready to, to go live. Um, in the case of a scheduled live, obviously you can do that now, set everything up, uh, and then later on, see there it says streaming destination saved. Um, so you can do that in advance, and then when you're ready to actually start the stream, you can either in this UI press go live on that button, or on the unit you have a uh, little button which has a play there, and you can uh, just press <laughs> play, and that will start the stream to the destination that you've set up. Yeah. Very nice. We've we've had a couple of questions come in, which let's address good. before we get into the product range. Which is the next yeah. slide. So Simon has given us a really good little um, use case of what he's tending intending to do setup wise. He says he's okay. he's intending to use a Shogun Seven from Atomos with three cameras yep. connected via three Hollyland Mars 400S transmitters, and he was thinking of taking a program feed of the mix into a device such as the Live View. Your thoughts? That is exactly the right sort of setup yes. from the shogun 7 and the live view point of view um the shogun 7 is a really nice little pair actually with live views because they're both quite small and it's just a simple touch screen where you can take 1080p four 1080p sdi signals in cut between them with the touch screen and it just sends a program output you can record all of those yep. at the same time on it and they're all just in a thing that's a little like a monitor. So yeah. it doesn't have any live streaming built into it. It's just a mixer. So pair it with a live view, you get that live streaming side of things, the encoding and the connection wherever you are in the world. Yep. That so, yeah, sounds Simon. like a great 
yeah. it's going to do a great job for you. The The only bit I would uh, look at there is perhaps the Hollyland Mars 400s. They are brilliant little Wi-Fi transmitters, but they're Wi-Fi transmitters. So for wireless video, Wi-Fi would not be what I would choose for a multi-camera environment simply because the latency on it, because it's Wi-Fi, one is longer and two goes up and down depending on how strong the signal is. So using something like a Teradec or something else that works like that, like Switz flow units, for example, those are actual digital wireless using an Amazon chip or a QE chip, which will give you a much better, much lower latency, but also a constant latency rather than Wi-Fi, which varies. So for sending something to a, some video village for a makeup artist to watch or something like that, the, the Holy Lands are great um, and really are cost effective. Um, but I would really look at those if budget's an option for you and that's why you've gone for the Holy Land, maybe look at Switz ones because they're a bit cheaper, like there's the new Curve um, 500, which would, I think would do a better job than the Holy Lands. Not that I don't like the Holy Lands, it's just the Wi-Fi versus normal thing for multi-camera work. But anyway, we're not here to talk about those, we're here to talk about Lydew. Um Simon <laughs> also says, what network providers would you recommend to give cost-effective unlimited data for the transmission? And Sky is asking, how does the cellular work on the solo? Can you put the SIM straight into it? So let's talk a little bit about SIM cards and cellular, because this is something that I think a lot of customers don't realize when they buy it for the first time is go, oh, hang on, I have to get like SIM cards from somebody else as well. I, th I think when people are learning the product for the first time, sometimes that's something that they don't initially realize. So do you want to talk us through how that works? Yeah, so basically the unit will use any internet connectivity you give to it. So if you've got a LAN cable from your router, a Wi-Fi connection, it will use those. You don't need to use any cellular airtime. If you want yeah. to add mobile broadband connectivity, then you need to have SIM cards and subscriptions to the providers which are going to give you that data. Yeah. Um, that could be the SIM out of your phone. I showed you the MiFi that I had earlier. It's the SIM out of there. Um, yeah. Or it, with the Solo, it's designed that you can use uh, external USB modems, which you can plug into the sides of the unit um, and basically adaptively load them. So you know, the more connections you want to give to it, the more subscriptions you need for um, some sort of data service. Uh, and when it comes to the cellular side, um, there are options as to how many different cellular networks you can throw at the units. It depends on which configuration you have. Um, in order to the question about putting them straight in the unit. So I think there's actually a slide on that. Carla. Yeah, let's um, cut to it. That might be, yeah, yeah this is a, the, what I was looking for. So there are three kind of hardware-based models of the LiveView Solo. Um, and to answer Sky's question, at the very top there, you've got the LiveView Solo Plus, and this is a unit that has um, embedded modems inside the unit. So there are two SIM card slots, and you can put yeah. the SIMs directly in there, uh, and it will stream and use those as well as Ethernet and the Wi-Fi. Um, it has also two USB ports, so you can put two additional USB modems in there. So that gives you the ability to put four uh, mobile broadband SIMs inside the unit, as well as Ethernet, as well as the Wi-Fi. Um, the other two units have uh, the Ethernet, the Wi-Fi, and the two USB ports. So you don't put the SIMs directly into those, you put them in your modems and then add them to the unit. So like, like a little Wi-Fi uh, dongle type modem um, thing that you would get for a laptop, that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. So um, for you, people won't be able which... to see these this very clearly, but um, this is one I'm holding here. This is the LiveView Solo Plus, the highest end one on this. Uh, and if I make it a little bit bigger, you've got um, the power port there on the, this side, the Ethernet port, and then one USB up here at the top. And then on the other side of the unit, you've got a USB, your HDMI input or output, um, an SDI one, which is what's hidden behind this, this raised thing. There, so HDMI and SDI, and then two SIM card slots up the top, and a micro SD. So what's the micro SD for, Paul? Um, it doesn't actually do anything at the moment. Uh, it's oh. you know, when we <laughs> use <laughs> future expansion. Uh, we use the same hardware platform when we develop the Solo as our broadcast products, and that's uh, as part of the, part the of hardware those. that we used it on. So it's, it's, okay. it's not active at the moment on the Solo product. Would it be how you do things like firmware updates or are they done through the web browser? No, they tend to be done over the air with the network updates. Gotcha. Um, I mean, yeah. on our professional product range, if you want to do store and forward or file-based transfers, having expandable storage in the devices is the reason it's to do useful. that. But, uh, I see. Yeah. Um, and there's also a, a headphone socket there. Well. Yeah. And then yeah, the again, you've got the control panel. So there's a little screen and a joystick and the power button. 
Yeah, and one of the good things about the screen, it does give you a preview of the video source. So you can see if you've left the overlays on your camera, you'll see those on the screen of the unit. I would turn them off. Ah, yeah, gotcha. Do a bit of, bit of bit confidence monitoring when you do the stream. Very cool. So um, one of, part, part of that question you, were, you asked was about which SIM cards to use and which oh, cellular yes. providers. Uh, you know, I haven't looked recently at the kind of uh, SIMs in the UK. You know, I don't. I'm not doing much sourcing of sims but you know the, the, generally they're pretty competitive and the packages tend to change um I, I think what i would say is have a look at the coverage in the areas that you want to go to mm. um you know if you've got the solar plus you can have four sims one from each network but if you've got mm. one of the other two then you know you're limited to kind of having two carriers um, and i think the most important thing is having the two networks that give you the best coverage in the area you're looking to do to use yeah and i assume the recommendation is to go for different um, networks each time and so yeah don't go for three possible. vodafone ones you know yeah i mean there are there's a you know some elements to that depending on where you are but at the end of the day if vodafone and e have their own separate cell towers their own backwall infrastructure if you're able to use two completely physical diverse physical networks for streaming yep. it's better to do that than to put two vodafone sims in and double up on or their network you have more diversity going with different cellular providers gotcha so if anyone else has any more technical questions about the product, um, let us know. Um, oh, I suppose one thing that we haven't talked about is can you use these just simply without all of the encoding side of things? So say if you're using a device like, well, the TriCaster that I'm using here, or just simply a computer yep. um, that is using Wirecast, you know, OBS, anything like that that's doing some encoding for you and you're just perfectly happy using that encoding, can yep. you still use this as the connection method? No, no, it doesn't provide any sort of bonding data transparent through. But, um, it's something we support in our higher end products, but you know, the product is inherently a, a hardware encoder linked to a bonding engine. So the real USP of it is the adaptive relationship between the encoder and our algorithm. So yeah, absolutely. They work in partnership. So the main point is to, is to do the encoding. Yeah. Gotcha stuff. Okay, right, let's crack on with some of the other things. So the, the last little bit of this, um, so yeah, as I said, if anyone's got any more technical questions like that, just leave them down in the um, comment section. The last bit of this PowerPoint is mainly about use cases. So to give people a bit of a perspective in terms of how these things are being used in each of the different sectors of the market. So do you want to talk us through this, Paul? Yeah, we popped on a few use cases. And I, you know, when we were preparing this, I specifically had a look for use cases were kind of related to the, you know, the current times we're going through with the COVID restrictions. So uh, uh, I've tried to put up some recent ones relating to that. The first one here is about uh, um, music venues and music streaming. It's for a, a customer in, in Germany that's basically doing do DJ sets from various clubs. Um, and actually you can see this is an example where it's a multi-camera solution, uh, a bit like what Simon was talking about. So there are a couple of cameras that are connected to a, a mixer um, and the output of that is put, in, put into the live view solo to create a live stream. Um, and, uh, you know, the benefit there is if you're going to these venues, of course, they probably have Wi-Fi, but you don't know how, how good it is, how reliable it is. Um, and being able to bond that together with the cellular connections makes the stream much more reliable. So, yeah. so that's, a, that's a good, a good use case. Um, we have quite a few customers doing this kind of thing. Um, and but during these times when they're not able to get, uh, punters into the clubs, it's obviously a, a good way of be being able to get, uh, content out to people by web, by live streaming. And looking at that picture, it looks like they're pairing the live view. You can see the live view there on the desk. It looks like they're pairing it with a laptop running Blackmagic um, ATEM software. So there's an ATEM um, TV Studio Pro, I'd imagine, somewhere in there. So it's just a simple little mixer, you know, you, even just yep. the, the simple ATEM Mini from Blackmagic to pair with this to switch between different HDMI inputs is so affordable. You know, you can have your entire setup for you know, not much more real cost than the live view unit itself. Okay, how's it yeah, work? Um, so this is another use case that comes from the UK. Um, the Global Fire Creator is a company which, you know, has started doing live streaming of places from houses of worship. And it's a bit of a sad subject, but they've been live streaming a lot of funerals. So yeah. uh, it's one another use case. It's similar to the uh, the music club in, in terms of the, you know, the requirement in that there are, venues that people are not able to go to because of the social distancing restrictions. Um, but people want to be able to see the events that are happening and they want a way to reliably stream from those locations. And the kind of places where this sort of thing happens are not, you know, 
normally associated with having really good connectivity. So, you know, having the solar allows you to kind of go the, to a variety of locations with a peace of mind that uh, you're going to have a more reliable stream. And also you don't, with anything that's even the slightest bit sensitive and, and on, on the other flip side of these things like weddings and stuff like that, obviously, where you're, you're not the main Absolutely. focus of the, the day and of the production, um, just simply being able to connect no matter where you are, you know, you don't have to worry about network things, all the rest of it. You don't have to say, look, I can't do it there because there's no mm. connection. You know, you can, you can work around whatever is being asked for you and be flexible and adaptable, which I think is, yeah. is a really powerful, powerful thing. I think in contrast to the last use case, you can see the setup here is something that's a lot more agile. It's a single operator mm. with a camera on a tripod and the unit attached. So it's uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so he, he's got that taped to his tri tripod um, yep. with two modems in it. And then that's just being taken straight out the back of the um, FX7, I think, there, because what's on top looks like a audio receiver. So yeah, just simple one camera, um, portable unit. I'm not sure what yeah. the box underneath is in that uh, thing. But, I can't um, actually see the bottom part of it on my screen, so I'm not sure either. Yeah. But might yeah, be a battery. Like a, might be a battery, something like that. Yep, true, very true. Uh, that's something I didn't talk about, but the powering on the units is, uh, you know, it's 12 volt DC input. So there's a whole variety of batteries you can get, sort of power banks that will allow you to increase the uh, the battery life if you want to stream for longer than two hours or you've yeah. got mains power available then you can always power it that way as well and with 12 volts you can run it off vlox and dtap and things like that as well i yep. imagine yep. yeah absolutely and you know that will that will run the unit and then when your external battery is depleted it will then run off the internal battery so you can hot swap those and keep it going for for long periods talking of long periods this is an interesting one because this is 24 7 live streaming from this uh... yeah, i wanted to put in a lighter hearted one after the funerals so yeah this is uh, the <laughs> Helsinki Zoo, um, they have a couple of pandas there, uh, which they got over from China, and uh, I think they were hoping that they were going to mate. So uh, they have a 24-hour live stream, um, the panda enclosure, which you can go to the website and uh, log in to see if there's any action um, at any point. And they're using the solo for that for that stream. If you're um, into that. <laughs> cool. Now, politics. I, I, I think news must be one of your your biggest customers. Yeah, right. absolutely. Really, that's a wild guess, but... Yeah, and no, I think that's something that's really increasing. As I said at the beginning, we have a large network news companies using our products for, you know, uh, organisational level contribution for a long time. Um, I think over the last couple of years, we've seen a real increase in smaller, more niche people that just want to do their own news content and get things out. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely an area of growth. Um, I mean, this one's actually related to the, again, the COVID crisis this is the government in portugal so when they do their mm -hmm. um their covid uh, press conferences and uh, announcements to, to the nation they've been using the the live view solo as the encoder to stream it out to their i think it was their twitter channel they've been putting it out on um gotcha. so again it's it's the encoder that they're using for that streaming service but yeah particularly for social media sort of live things having a, a live reporter you know you you take a protest or something like that you can be having a live stream of what's going on there on your social media channels you know um yeah it's, absolutely it's i think one of the next you know on this on the subject of news i think one of the other slides is uh, from huffington post and that was exactly what they wanted to do you know have their reporters to just go live and you know stream from events uh, mm. you know and put those out onto their platforms so uh, you know we even see some traditional media news organizations that actually sometimes want to have their reporters just stream to social media channels uh yeah. you know without going through the traditional broadcast workflow mm -hmm. and uh, that's something the solo allows you to do using more professional cameras you know uh, more reliable connectivity um in those sorts of environments absolutely now sports must be the other fairly big market for you yeah yeah and, and one that's grown a lot so uh, you know we Involved in some higher end sports with the professional products, but you know, when you go down to the solo end of the market, um, you know, there are a lot of online events where people want to stream their content. Uh, you know, the kind of sports that traditionally wouldn't have got live video coverage, you know, people are able to stream them now using their phone. But when you want to move up from that and create slightly more professional looking content with better cameras and have more, more reliable connections, products like the live you solo really come into their own. Mm. Uh, a good example here from, from Germany, from the German off road. Uh, race series so you know they're producing a number of using a number of different live solar units to basically create different views and put those up to a web streaming platform um mm -hmm. 
it's a very cost effective way of uh, providing you know, several different feeds of an event that's happening um you know over, over a geographical area absolutely now this and one is a going at... very dramatic <laughs> Use yeah, and when you do, you're out on a racetrack or you're out on a mountain, you know, you're not sure about the connectivity as long as there's cellular, which it tends to be in ski resorts. Um, you know, that's another good place where you can go to. So this is from a from Austria. It's uh, you know uh, basically a sort of stand up show they were doing from a ski resort on top of a mountain, and uh, yeah, you can see there's basically got a small panel set up on the on a little table, and they've got a camera and a live solo to go live from there. So it really gives you the ability to go live from anywhere. Mm. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right, so the last little one of these we've got is just simply a theatre company. Um, yeah, this is actually one of the first solo use cases we did. It was kind of pre-COVID times, but again, you know, this was a, a theatre company that wanted to provide their own exclusive behind the stage kind of all access, kind of general interest, fan engagement type pieces to social media. And yeah, the solo allows them to wirelessly walk around and, and stream that kind of content. So uh, yeah, very you know useful addition to their social media strategy. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you so much. It doesn't look like many, many other um, questions have come in there, but yeah. I think that's a fairly fairly good overview. I mean, when you boil it down, they're really simple. You know, they're very, yeah. very advanced. That bonding side of things is a incredibly advanced um, piece of technology, but the actual device and its functionality, you know, yeah. it's pretty simple. It's really designed to be simple to use and take the you know the difficult technical plumbing side of the the bonding engine and simplify it for the users. So that, that's why the product's kind of designed that way. You can see the UI is simple. You don't have to worry about configuring streaming servers. It's just about the destination that you're going to, and the rest of it's kind of taken care of uh, by the back end. Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah. So uh, I I think one thing we haven't mentioned thinking about it is the the um, cloud bonding service yeah. that you guys do yeah yeah so that's um when if you are encoding a video stream on location and you want to split those the packets that make up that video stream over different diverse physical networks for resiliency you have to at some point put them back together again somewhere um and we basically hold host a cloud bonding service, which is basically dynamically assigned server instances, which are collecting those packets and putting them back together again and delivering it onto your online video platform. So uh, this is in terms of the LiveView Solo product, what's uh, termed as the LRT subscription. So if you want to use the bonding side of the LiveView encoder, there is a subscription to the LRT service, which you add on to the, to the unit in order to use that. And this is separate from your data plans from, from the unit side. Um, and, right. you know, coming to question about pricing this is probably a good way of illustrating it that you had a question there about uh, what was the lowest cost mm. unit uh, that we offer so that would be the live solo hdmi so the unit that has only an hdmi video input uh, and that's you know our list prices are in euros so it's 829 euros but it's also on the it's on the pro iv website 735 pounds um and that's gives you the encoder um Need to add data plans to that separately if you want to add mobile data if you just want to use it on ethernet and wi-fi that's fine um the unit will act as a straightforward encoder encoding on a single interface uh, as rtmp to your destination and then you can add the lrt subscription on top of that and the lrt subscription is what allows the bonding in the cloud service um and that's typically 40 euros a month or if you buy it 12 months it's 10 months for the price of 12. Gotcha. so you add that on if you want to use the bonding um, and I think the reason we've done it that way is if you're always in locations where you want to use the bonding and you know you need that all the time, you can subscribe to it for a longer period. But if you're doing ad hoc jobs where okay, there's one coming up in a couple of months where I need the, the bonding service, you can add that on as a monthly basis and add it on when you need it. So, uh, so this is the, the page on our website for, for live use, yes. by the way. So, um, so to get one of these up and running, if you buy just the one of the encoders at the top there, you are getting just a hardware encoder. You know, you use exactly. one, you use one method of the so either one three G network, one yep. Ethernet network, one Wi Fi network, something like that, and then this becomes yes. your hardware encoder. Um, yep. And then if you want to use the bonding side of things, you then need to get that cloud bonding service and um, have several different ways of doing it. Uh, so three G networks, exactly right. all the rest of it. Yeah. 
exactly so if you know you've got jobs coming up where you have a really really good connection you don't think you need the bonding you know you can stop that description and use it as a harbor enclosure until you go back to the events where you need it yeah absolutely um aiden is asking he's in the caribbean how can i get a unit to buy you mean you have dealers worldwide we also ship worldwide so i mean yeah um get them in the caribbean no exactly problem. i don't it's, i'm not that familiar with the, the dealer network in the caribbean but if you go to the live view solo page it's ghost go solo.tv um there's a reseller page there so you can find your nearest reseller um, but as carl said there are a number of uh resellers that ship internationally as well so yep just get in touch we can help you definitely um okay fantastic right i think we'll call it there then i guess where we can all get back to and enjoy the sun but thank you so much for joining me paul brilliant well thanks very much for having me carl it was a, it was a pleasure yeah, no problem at all. I think they're really great products, and I think um, we've we've certainly had a lot of interest um, over the the recent period. Um, but I think really, to be honest, like in all the marketing for this stream, I've just said, look, if you're into live video, you need to know that this exists. You know, whether it's right for your setup or not, but it's something that you need to know because they are a fantastic little toolbox to just get you out of problems. Sometimes, you know, like. If all of a sudden I needed to pick this up and go from the middle of a field, it's useful to have something like this. Yeah. So I think they are really great little um, oh, Sky says he's watching from the sunny park. I'm very jealous. It's getting very hot in this room. Yeah. It's <laughs> <getting> <laughs> <down> back <on. laughs> so let's get back out into the sun sunshine. So thank you so much for joining me, Paul. Thank you Thanks, very Paul. much Thanks, everyone. to everyone who is watching. If you have any questions, if you want to buy a live unit or any of the other products mentioned, please do get in touch with the ProView sales team. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye. The new Super 35 sensor that Canon have introduced with the C300 Mark III is quite a big step up from other S35 sensors that they have created before. From the body and the flexibility that gives us in terms of the expansion packs and the interchangeable mount to the sensor with its increased dynamic range for tackling scenes that possibly we couldn't have tackled or captured faithfully before. I can get more out of this camera. My money goes further. It's as simple as that from a business standpoint. From a creative point of view, it's unquestionably unlocking more creative avenues for us as filmmakers.
Sí.